Now, one more thing about the ketogenic diet. So kind of switching back to that, um, a question that comes up a lot um, is what about ketone supplements, if you will, or the exogenous ketones? Um, and I know there's different types. Um, they're still relatively new. I mean, now it's been a few years, certainly, that there's various ones available. But I mean, I don't know, maybe like five to seven years ago, it was pretty unheard of, like only a small subset of people had ever tried these things. And I guess they tasted mm -hmm. terrible and, and whatnot. Um, they're still relatively new, but there's certainly some research showing some potential benefits. But what are your kind of big picture thoughts about where they fit in with nutritional ketosis? Yeah, that, that's an important question. Um, we do a lot of research here on exogenous ketones. So both for health issues and but mostly for the military, for both performance and resilience, like to head injury, things like that. So, uh, you know, it's a big area of work here. We looked at every kind of exogenous ketone you can imagine. And basically they fall into a few categories. So the one the public's most familiar with are ketone salts. And uh, these don't taste horrible. They can be made to taste good. And uh, they slightly elevate the ketone level. You know, if a person is, you know, doing some form of low carb and they drink a ketone salt uh, from a reputable maker, it'll bump them up into ketosis, low ketosis, like 0 0.6, 0 0.7, maybe even 0.8 millimolars. That's kind of high, but in that range, uh, the ketone monoester that was developed at NIH and also Oxford was involved, but Richard Veach was the primary developer. Uh, that's very potent, the monoester. That'll put you around five millimolars uh, very quickly and you'll stay high five or six mil millimolars for hours. And then there'll be a slow tapering off. Um, that's ex that one is expensive, very potent. That's the one that's typically used like in the Tour de France and races like that. Um, tastes dreadful and cannot be made to taste anything better than dreadful. The uh, early versions of it were worse than dreadful. Then there's um, other kinds of exogenous ketones that are not technically esters, but that are still blends of 1,3-butendiol and beta-hydroxybutyrate. One or two of those are quite palatable. Um, but uh, you asked also about how it relates to the diet. You know, the truth of the matter is scientific community is still trying to understand to what extent does the ingestion of an exogenous ketone replicate the diet. And so far in about 15 things that have been looked at, it does tend to replicate the diet except one thing. So for sure, uh, you know, you drink your exogenous ketone, if it is at all effective, it ought to shut off lipolysis. And uh, lipolysis is the reason that some people are drinking these. So if you see people wearing their shirt in the airport and it said the brand name, you know, it had their brand on it, and then it said fat burning machine, uh, no. As soon as you drink that, that stops. So why are they losing weight? Are they losing weight drinking it? Yes, because it strongly depresses appetite. So are they losing weight? Sure, I absolutely believe that, that they lost weight, but it's not because of elevated lipolysis. The, uh, you know, there's a feedback system, and when you drink that, lipolysis in most cases goes to zero or near zero. So that is one difference. Um, and... Uh, we're interested in really elevated ketone levels for things like uh, dementia or for preventing traumatic brain injury, the sequelae. You'll still have the blow, like if you mess up your parachute jump and you hit your head, but will the downstream damage be as severe if you were first dosed with a heavy dose of a ketone ester? And we'll know that in, soon. We're doing those studies now. We've also looked at ketones at altitude, and there's a benefit uh, to the warfighter that's operating, say, on a mountain uh, in terms of cognitive performance and reaction time. Yeah. So so maybe, maybe it would be fair to say that the um, ketone, exogenous ketones or the ketone supplements are a little bit more about 
performance than about like trying to lose weight because they're at least temporarily going to like slow down fat burning due, through the feedback mm -hmm. mechanism. Um, no, I know have, they have some like glycemic benefits. So the diabetic patient could maybe still benefit even if they're not yes. burning more fat or what have you. And that's uh, a part of the advantage, right? So you, these people aren't lying. They do lose weight. Uh, I think it has to do with glycemic control and with appetite suppression. Fair enough. Yeah, it, it is interesting, all the different potential benefits. And of course, not too long ago, it was like this totally un, uncharted water of like, what happens when you put this into your body from the outside? Because normally it was always coming only from the inside. Um, and that's interesting that you mentioned how much longer the esters last um, versus the ketone salts. So I'm sure like the the ones that seem affordable or relatively inexpensive are probably always those ketone salts, I'm assuming out there yeah. on the market. The salts are typically powdered and the esters are typically a liquid. Of course, the chemistry is entirely different, but uh, the esters and uh, are typically much more efficacious, much more expensive and taste much worse. 